So, uh, this is where that Goliath rat is, or was in the sewers. And also, uh, you can skip that part, which is kind of neat. But I killed that Goliath rat in like four shots. Open that shortcut up. I believe if you have... You're free to get out of here. But yeah, I believe... There's a, uh... Kirkman. I don't know his... I, I don't know what he's actually called. I just know him as Kirkman. He was like... Oh, there he is. Kirkman! Kirkman? Oh, there you are. Wow. 6k, a humanity, spiked shield, okay. So, killing him here gets you the shield, killing him in Lost Isolith gets you the sword. And I believe there's one more area oh. that gets you the armor set. We don't need to do any of this, by the way. Well. Uh, might be... <laughs> might be good to put on the curse bite ring. Yeah, because that gives a ton of curse resistance. I believe I said it before, but there are a lot less rings in Dark Souls 1. But also what rings there are. Ring of the Evil Eye, yeah. But what rings there are tend to be a lot more high value. Because the rings in later games, I mean, yeah, there are definitely some high value ones. But a lot of them are just like a thing that's n nice to have, but not like a massive increase to anything. Whereas here in Dark Souls 1, there's a lot less. But, man, they give a big increase. <laughs> Which is a different approach, certainly. I don't know which one I prefer. In terms of, like, design philosophy. I know that I... Like, in practice, an outcome, an execution, I definitely prefer Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring the most, but that's pretty much purely because they have a thing that heals. The Sun Princess Ring in Dark Souls 3 and the Blessed Ooh Talisman in Elden Ring. You're very strange and... Can I chop your tail off? God. 
God, you're massive. Ooh. Okay, this is like the first massive beast boss in the game. Like, yeah, there's a Taurus demon and the Asylum demon, and ow. and they're big, but. Okay, this is... Can I... Can I not get the tail? I feel like I've done a decent bit of damage to the tail, but... Oh well, whatever. Light town key that is of no use to us. And then that's the uh, like hard leather set, standard set, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Oh, yeah, we have a firekeeper soul. Let's get out of here. Yeah, so I honestly forgot about this entire area. Because <laughs> my plan originally was to skip Capra Demon and Gaping Dragon and save them for later. But I needed to get into the depths in order to get the large ember to go from plus five to plus six. And then I went, okay, well, then I'll kill Capra Demon, go in, grab the ember, get out, and then I'll save it for later. And then I just kind of forgot about it. But we killed them. And so we now have that under our belt. And Bush. Yeah, so looked it up because at this point we've beaten the game three times, so I I feel more comfortable looking things up. And yeah. Like, the entire DLC roster is resistant to magic, which is oof. And so... So oof. <laughs> is, I think, the way to put it there, then. But, I mean, we still have records. It's still plus 13. It's pretty decently upgraded. I dodged too early, but thankfully we were out of range. And yeah, we still have 31 decks. So, if that magic resistance for the DLC proves to be a little too much, we can still go back. No. But... Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, what I found is, and I found this going through the depths, is trying to do the vertical attacks one-handed. If you look, the first swipe actually goes off to our right, and the second one goes off to our left. And so trying to do that with something that's low on the ground in front of us 
doesn't work super well. Whereas two-handing, it kind of does like a V, where... Did we get... Yeah, we got the Crest Fortorius. Good, good, good. But... So I found it's just better to two-hand if we want to hit something that's, like, down on the ground. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Is it not so? Hey, get out of here. You? Get out of here. I think this is the way to do this. And he if Yeah, because these guys were a pretty big problem. Hello. Don't great. Yep. Ah, you. Yep. Don't you Sure. Well, yeah, those guys are kind of a big problem. And so, being able to just beeline to Alvina and get them off of our back, essentially for free. Like, the only cost of that is, like, 10 seconds or so of just going through dialogue. Because there isn't a big there isn't like a big emphasis on covenants. Like you can just kind of join them and leave them as you please. No mushroom men. Wee. I I love some of the Dark Souls One enemy designs. Come on, punch. That's 269. That's 200. Yeah, so. There we go. Ooh, gold pine resin. I'm typically not big on using consumable items. But I think there are a fair few bosses that are weak. What's going on behind us? I heard rapid footsteps. But yeah, I think there's a fair few bosses that are weak to lightning. And, like, I know dragons are weak to lightning. At least in the lore. Which... We probably want to take off Curse Bite Ring. Wolf Ring might be good. Wolf Ring is probably the best option. Hello, Siffy boy. Hello. 
Ow. I was gonna drop the shield and roll. And I only got through half of that. Yep. Ooh. We're doing surprisingly well for of having like kind of a weird hitbox up. <laughs> At least for like piercing weapons. Because their hitbox is essentially like ow. Yeah my my roll on that was very bad. But when it comes to like what we can reasonably hit that is not the direction I rolled but yeah for what we can reasonably hit their health bar is like four sticks essentially I like how the sword goes into the ground. Cool. And 48k. And the hornet ring. So there's... Wolf, Hawk, Hornet, and Leo. Wolf being for Artorius. Hawk being for Hawkeye, Goff. Hornet being for Lord's Blade Carrion, and then Leo being for Ornstein. Which, I believe all three of these are people you find in the DLC. Which is kind of interesting. But... Yeah, we can... We can Homeward Bone out of here. So, this is going by a lot faster than I thought it would. Because... Yeah. Because I had some plans on how I wanted to do the next few parts for the rest of this run. And the idea was do Gaping Dragon, Sif, and then Four Kings for this part but unless I'm very much under yeah underestimating how long this is taking uh, I think we breeze through this pretty quickly which it is totally possible that I'm underestimating it because Uh, the one where we killed five bosses, which, now saying it, it, that makes sense. But the one where we killed the five bosses, including Bed of Chaos, like where we ended it by killing Bed of Chaos, uh, that was two hours and 21 or 22 minutes. Thankfully, I was able to shave a lot of it down. 
because who oh boy I I shaved it down to a bit over an hour like an hour and a half at most I believe uh, poke nope Which, yeah, deciding to go with that decision of cutting out the parts that I saw as unnecessary, I think that was very good. Now, I'm not good at editing. Certainly not yet, at least. Shush. And I don't want to use transitions. At least not yet. And so a lot of the cuts are probably a little jarring. Sorry about that. But... I think it'll be good to uh, cut out some fluff. A lot of just like walking around, killing enemies. Yeah. Wolfering is helping, certainly. Because uh, I don't think this set gives any poise. Hey, I'm trying to heal. Yeah, we can drop down here. What? My thumb was not even remotely close to the dodge button. So I don't know what that was about, but I've noticed that a few times. Where sometimes my character will just randomly dodge. Even without me pressing the button. Which is weird. It happened like three or four times while I was grinding in Sen's Fortress. And Hello. And at first I thought that, like it's something wrong with my controller. But this is my main go to controller. Oh yeah, you can just drop straight down to the bottom, right? I think so. Yeah. Mr. Boss? Right, there you are. But yeah, this is like my main go-to controller. And that doesn't happen on any other game.
and so Oh, that's the AoE, okay. I, I thought it was a grab. Hmm. That goes a lot farther than, I think, every single time. And like, every single time I get hit by it, I extend how long or how far I think the range goes. But it always goes farther than that. But this is still a very fun fight. I think... Hey, where are you going? Oh no. I think all the moves outside of that one are fun. Because they're all pretty well telegraphed. I was gonna say, even the grab, even though I have never dodged it until there, it's still good. Wait, hold on. Is that a fifth king? You didn't tell me you'd be bringing the fifth king in here. Let's. Let's calm that down. Alright. You have no need. Okay. Yeah, I... Uh, the Covenant of Artorias ring makes me a little confused because... I've never tried going into the boss without it equipped, but definitely once you beat the boss, you can just unequip it, and you can hang out in the abyss. And so, is it like you kill Sif, you get it in your inventory, and then you can just go whenever, or do you need to equip it, and then like, once you kill the boss, you can unequip it. That's something I'm not sure about. But anyway, it's... Oh, close to two levels. We're like 3k away. Surely this would do it, right? 6k, yeah. Another two and then another three. Yeah. Well, I guess we can go. Do, 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 do. Undead Parish. Undead Parish would probably be the best one. And we can. Start the DLC. Probably. Hopefully. Pew. Yep. Yep. 
So, another thing I looked up was uh, Siegmeier's quest. And apparently with Siegmeier's quest, because I've been able to get him to Blight Town, but then after that, I couldn't figure out where to find him next. And apparently the next place is uh, Lost Isolith. Which does not make sense to me. But then... Because... It, it, it's just baffling to get my head around this. Because you find him, like, directly next to the tree. That leads to the Great Hollow. And later on to Ash Lake. And so I always figured, oh, so he probably next goes to the Great Hollow or Ash Lake. No, instead he goes to the other side of Blight Town, then all the way down. Cool. Can't use it, but cool. But yeah, he goes all the way to the other side of Blight Town. And then all the way down after that. All the way into Lost Isolith. And then... You interact with him there. And then after that, he goes all the way back up to his previous position, then goes through the Great Hollow and into Ash Lake. But, like, at that point, he was right next to it two positions ago. So he's right next to the Great Hollow then moves super, super, super far away from the Great Hollow, and then moves to the Great Hollow. Why? That'd be like me moving here, then moving to like, Sen's Fortress or Anne Orlando and then moving to Undead Berg. It just doesn't make sense. Hello. Whoosh. I don't want to get shot by the Hydra, but I think I'm going to get shot by the Hydra. But also, they, those guys can get shot by the Hydra, so... And the Hydra does a lot of damage. It hits fast, it hits hard, and it hits for a lot of damage. And you can't even shield it. I was... Ooh. Yeah, I was holding my shield up. Okay, then. Wait, yeah, I was holding my shield up. It has AoE blasts. And it's also really hard to tell where the ground is here. Let's actually go with this. Yeah. 
it's just like impossible to tell what ground is safe. And what ground is not ground, but instead instant death. But it's like... Getting... Or if you aren't close enough to it... Then you deal with... The... Endless water shots but if you get too close to it then hello but if you get too close to it then you fall in it's instant death And it's just really hard to tell where that like, oh my god, look how far away, look how far away that was. And then we can title screen. I think that works. I hope it works. Yeah. Title screen and then this gold golem appears. That is a design that I like. Both these guys in general, I think they're pretty well designed. Not super difficult. You'd think they'd be more difficult, but... Oh well. But yeah. Like, the blue ones are every time enemies, and the gold ones are one time only enemies. Which is a nice way to tell them apart. I like that a lot. So, yes. Tis thou who my yep. I my yep. My Good. But yeah, rusted iron ring. Very good. What I've noticed about what I've <laughs> what I've noticed about the Dark Souls One Rings is most of them tend to be less universally useful, or at least there aren't a lot of universally useful ones. There's only a handful, like, five or so. Like, Ring of Steel Protection, pretty universally useful. Hovel's Ring, pretty universally useful. I don't have it, but Claranthe Ring. So, there's a small handful, but for the most part, the Rings and Dark Souls 1 are, like, niche but they do their thing really well like rusted iron ring if there's like deep water that slows you down or poison or whatever it may be that slows you down that's really good if if you're using a bow a lot then the hawk ring can be really good 
if you do a lot of parries, then critical, or the hornet ring can be really good. If you're doing a more sneaky play style, then slumbering dragon crest ring is very good. Whenever there's the basilisk, then the curse blade is really good. If an enemy has fire damage or magic damage or lightning damage, then the stone plate rings are very good. So it's like... Because outside of deep water and poison, rusted iron ring, useless. Outside of enemies that do magic or fire damage or, or lightning damage, these ones kind of not useful. But... Most of them just have like a niche, and then they're just good at whatever their niche is. Like, very good at it. I am. It, I... Yep. Thank you for the gesture. Ah, uh, yeah, this goes on intelligence. And I do love chameleon, so. Hmm. I could use this, but question is, do we want to? I don't know. If thou art in need, I may the. Yep. All the way up here. Homeward bones are a lot rare in this game. I've noticed, but we've hit the end of the game. And so, I'm just like, eh, uh, I don't want to. Uh, I'm not really bothered by using them at all. Killed the Gwendolyn. Uh, I believe he's the one who's keeping like the illusion of Guinevere and the illusion, the illusion of sunlight, going. But like, we killed them, and Guinevere and Sunlight are still around. The people I've talked to have all said that as, like, the illusion as if it's a bad thing. Going like, oh, it's really bad that... Because, <laughs> like, they're lying about the state of Anne Orlando. Neat. Uh... But, 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 hello. I don't remember why exactly they said it was bad offhand, but... You're free to leave me alone. Oh, can you not get through here? Also, yeah, I left them alive, because... They're weak to strike, and we don't have strike. And as you can see, our weapon bounces off. Uh, I'm gonna try something. I don't know if this will work, but we can try it. Gotta be worth a try, right? Oh! Wonderful. Alright, but... I think... I think that's actually a good thing. Like, Anne Orlando being an illusion. Uh. 
not in and of itself. Okay. But... I think it shows the power of Gwendolyn. Ow. So mean. I'm just... I'm not here to kill you guys. At all. Oh my god! These guys unironically do more damage than God. Like, y you think Gwyn, Lord of Cinder, is doing damage like that? I don't think so. Oh. That's the big AoE. I'm literally only here to kill this guy. I don't know why you guys want me dead so badly. I'm trying to get rid of your golem infestation. Alright. And we can pop another one of these. I'm out of here. Totally forgot what I was saying. Because I was just so shook by how much damage that one enemy did. But off we go. Hmm. Do we have any ring that'd be more useful because I know the DLC starts off immediately with a boss fight which like they do lightning damage but I went the wrong way I was only two away Oof. But, yeah, I know they do lightning damage, but I don't have the lightning ring. And I don't care enough to go get it. Unless I legitimately start struggling. Which, I shouldn't. I'm level 89. Hello. That still looks very cool. Yeah, I don't... I mean, I, I guess Wolfring... Slurp me up. Hello, Manus. Manus really just... Slurped us up. Just dragged us in here. Sanctuary Garden. Uh, yes, Zwei Hander, yes, yes. All right. 
Still kind of shocking to me that they just started the DLC off like this. Ow. I, I spent that entire time 49. So yet. It is gonna be better to go with this. Aggression is error. I was holding the shield button, but okay. I do think this is legitimately one of the best fights in Dark Souls 1. And the aggression is a big part of that. The speed, you really have to keep up with this boss. Really, really good boss. They definitely stepped it up big time for the DLC. And yeah, it's clear that I'm definitely gonna have to drop a Velka's going to the bosses. If they're all like that, because records did like double the damage. Uh, it's really hard to say what should go where because I really feel like stamina is a must but also health is a must but also damage is a must so it's like ah ooh, what do I do what do I do Anyways, uh, we killed three bosses. We killed three, no, four, because Sanctuary Garden as well. Because Gaping Dragon is the one I forgot. Gaping Dragon, Sif, Four Kings, and now Sanctuary Garden, Guardian. So, we killed four bosses. Hello. Well, look at this one. From what faraway age hast thou come? Thy scent is very human indeed, mm -hmm. but not intolerable. Ah, oh, good, good. Princess Dusk's savior. Mm -hmm. Thine aura is precisely as she described. I thank thee deeply for rescuing her highness. Mm -hmm. But Princess Dusk is here no longer. 
tragic. Snatched away by that horrifying primeval human. And so I must ask, couldst thou once more play the savior? Yes. Thank you. I am Elizabeth, guardian of this sanctuary. I shall assist thee for I am... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you have gold pine resin. Yeah, so they have everything that Dusk had. Even down to the losing chameleon because I bought it off Dusk. Except she also has repair powder and gold pine resin. Which I'm gonna buy. May the flames guide thee. Mm-hmm. So I wonder can All right, so we can buff this with gold pine resin, which I believe Manus is weak to it because lightning in this universe, or at least in Dark Souls 1, where there is no holy damage. Uh, and so lightning's like the manifestation of holy in this game. And Manus is of the abyss, which is like the exact opposite of holy. So I think he's weak to lightning, and I think Calamita's weak to lightning as well, because they're a dragon, and dragons are weak to lightning in the lore, so... I, I'm i still going to try to go with this for the areas and the normal enemies, and then swap to this for the bosses. Which, again, I'm not big on consumable items. But also, Manus was tough. So. But still. Four bosses. And kind of an area with Dark Root Garden past the uh, Crest Gate thing for Artorius. I mean, we breezed through basically all of it, but still we can kindle this to get 10 and uh I think that's good progress I think we can stop it here so I'm trying to think of what bosses are next or what bosses are left there's Artorius there's Calamy there's Manus there's Gwyn. We didn't kill the Asylum Demon, the tutorial boss, with a piercing sword because we didn't have one at the time. So we're gonna have to go do that. So that's five bosses that I can think of. Doesn't, doesn't sound too impossible. I mean, obviously besides the Asylum Demon, the rest of the bosses are some of the harder fights in the game, but I believe we, because we've only fought them once before, at least the DLC bosses, and I mean, both times fighting the Sanctuary Guardian, Guardian have been first tries. I, I think I beat them first try last time as well. Uh, I beat Calamite first try last time, pretty sure. And then Artorius and Manus were both second try. Very surprisingly. Very, very surprisingly with Manus. But... So I don't think it'll be too impossible. But it will be exciting because of some of the best bosses in the game coming up. So, uh, yeah.